Alleluia. The Lord is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. These words come to us right on Easter Day. We made it. We're here. We have gone through observing a faithful Lent, a very powerful Holy Week in the context of a pandemic. And we come to this Easter Day invited to get in touch with the shock and the awe that those early disciples felt after all the events that had happened and all the grief that they had experienced, the voice of their Lord comes to them, the grace of the events that take place at the tomb occur, and they begin to put together their lives again. And so so do we. We now move into what we call Easter Tide, and it is going to be a very special, very meaningful Easter Tide, and we begin right now with Easter Day services. Thank you for joining us. Happy Easter. Happy Easter, Jahan. Happy Easter, Holy Spirit. Good Happy morning. <laughs> oh, we are so blessed to all be together. Right. On this Resurrection Sunday. We made it. We did. We, we made, made it. Yes. <laughs> and it's a joy. We have uh, the rectory has been beautifully decorated by Jody Elting. Mm -hmm. Such lovely flowers. Beautiful. The cross in front of... The church, the wooden cross, is beautifully decorated for today. Mm -hmm. um, we have come through Holy Week, and yes. uh, it's time to say... The Lord is risen! The Lord is risen indeed! Alleluia! Alleluia! <laughs> Thanks right. be to Thanks God! Thanks be to God! <laughs> Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known and from you no secrets are hid. 
Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now we invite you to join us in singing the doxology with alleluias. And you can mm -hmm. find that in your online service leaflet or just follow along. It's quite easy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Alleluia, alleluia. Praise come up by the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection may be raised from death of sin by your life-giving spirit, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Jeremiah. At that time, says the Lord, I will be the God of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. Thus says the Lord, the people who survived the sword found grace in the wilderness when Israel sought for rest. The Lord appeared to him from far away. I have loved you with an everlasting love, and therefore I have continued my faithfulness to you. Again I will build you, and you shall be built, O virgin Israel. Again you shall take your tambourines and go forth in the dance of merrymakers. Again you shall plant vineyards on the mountains of Samaria. The planter shall plant and enjoy the fruit. For there shall be a day when the sentinels will call in the hill country of Ephraim. Come. Let us go up to Zion, to the Lord our God, the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. And together, let us pray the psalm which is appointed for this Easter Sunday, Psalm 118, which can be found either in your service bulletin or in the Book of Common Prayer on page 760. Give, Give thanks, thanks to, to the Lord, Lord for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim, His mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and He has become my salvation. There is a sound of exultation and victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely, but he did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you, for you answered me, and have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. And this is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. A reading from Colossians. If you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth, for you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you will also be revealed with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We just heard a reading from Paul's letter to the Colossians. I want you to think of this lesson as St. Paul telling us 
we are quarantined with God. We are quarantined with God in Christ. When we are set free from that quarantine, we will see our full humanity and God's full purpose for us. Jahan, do you remember the book, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe? Of course. Of course you would. It's a, it's a book by C.S. Lewis, great Anglican divine. Mm -hmm. And in that children's fantasy land of Narnia, mm -hmm. he says that it's always winter and never Christmas. Mm -hmm. It's always winter and never Christmas. Mm -hmm. When I was a student in Germany, I went with a classmate of mine to England, to C.S. Lewis's hometown, or not to his hometown, but to his home country. I went with my friend to the town where his family was from. That town is a place called Stoke-on-Trent, and it's where all the, that great English Wedgwood China is made. Ooh, all the I royal China. You, <laughs> Jahan's got some of that. I've got some. My grandmother had a bunch of it. My mother has a bunch of mm -hmm. Anyway, this is where all of that is made. Oh, cool. Isn't it cool? Oh, yeah. But the town, in part because it's where all the china is made, it's really polluted. Uh, it's an industrial oh. town, badly polluted. And I found myself there on Easter morning, all those years ago when I was a student. And I made my way into the city center to find a church, and I found an Anglican church. And that church was, uh, had so much pollution around it that it had turned black with soot mm. from all the industry. And I made all this effort to find an Easter celebration. I really had had my hopes up that I'd find this Easter celebration. It was cold and the church was covered in soot. And then I walked in, and the service was okay. Nothing like what we have at the Church of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Nothing like what we are all missing this morning so much. Mm -hmm. And so after the service, there's a, one of those great red phone booths, you know, that you find in England. And I'm in the phone booth, and I call my parents, and I'm kind of down about it all. I get my parents on the phone, and just hearing their voice... Made me feel beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's like when I hear your voice, John. It just you've got a beautiful voice. Mm -hmm. Just hearing my parents' voice made me feel good. And then in the in the city center of this place in England, I'm in the phone booth, and out of nowhere walks a red fox. <laughs> and it looks at me, and I look at it. Mm -hmm. And I could not have been more surprised in my whole life to see this fox and that it looked at me and I looked at it. It was like a moment of pure disclosure. God had revealed something to me I never dreamed I was going to see. And mm -hmm. there, this, there it was on that Easter day. I'll never forget it. Mm -hmm. That Easter day in England, it could have been like being in a cemetery. It could have been like being in a land where it's always winter and never Christmas, where it was always foggy and I could never find Easter joy. But I found Easter joy in the surprise of it all. Easter found me, that may be actually a better way to put it. And we are hoping that Easter finds you wherever you are. Um, I think as we enter into our gospel reading, Jahan's about to start reading, I think picture Mary Magdalene and um, she is headed to the tomb. She is headed to the cemetery. Um, she is expecting things to be cold mm -hmm. and sad and dark, depressing. And let's see what she finds. Mm -hmm. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory, Glory to, to you, you, Lord Christ. Christ. Early on that first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. The, tomb, the stone at the entry of the tomb had been the biggest obstacle 
uh, in Mary Magdalene's mind. Why did I get into about the stone, stone? You know, she was just thinking one step ahead. The first obstacle was the stone. Uh, how is she going to move it? How am I going to move the stone? Have you ever seen those stones are so big? Yes. They're so big. We always forget the need and we frequently need, need to be reminded that the big thing is always the thing God has already done. God has already yes. done so much for us. And here's what God does for Mary Magdalene. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have laid him. So the first message is from Mary Magdalene isn't that Jesus has been raised from the dead. Mm -hmm. She's not quite ready to go there yet. It's that the stone has been moved mm -hmm. and that the body's been stolen. So those are the first two things. That, that is terrifying. That is, <laughs> oh my gosh. It's terrifying. And yet uh, both of those things seem like Reasonable possibilities, don't they? Mm -hmm. Someone moved the stone, someone stole the body. Awful thing to do. Mm -hmm. She leaps to conclusions that could fit into her mind. These are things that we, we could might already be familiar with, might conceive in our imagination. Humanity habitually fills in the facts with anticipated explanations. Jesus might have likened this to how... A piece of dust in God's creation may become a boulder in a human eye. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. One of the things that we discover if we ponder the scriptures for the Passion and Holy Week and even the, uh, this morning at the tomb, uh, there's a lot of humble presence of the Christ in this. And there are things we admire about that kind of humility of the Christ. And um, one of the things we discover here is that the other disciple who's not named, we know there's Peter and then there's a disciple that's not named, that is most likely uh, John the Evangelist, mm -hmm. um, who is the actual author of this gospel. It was common modesty for the gospel writers to exclude themselves. Scholars believe that the, in Mark's gospel, mm -hmm. the unnamed man that runs off naked from the Garden of Gethsemane, remember that yes. peculiar scene? <laughs> that was Mark, the gospel writer. In the this, first. The, the first, yes, right. the first mm -hmm. of the original gospel. That's mm -hmm. right, that's right. Uh, in this Easter gospel, young John outruns Peter. But John waits at the entrance for Peter, the older leader of the disciples. Impetuous Peter um, does not hesitate. He runs right into the tomb. Uh, he examines the scene. He gathers the details, uh, commits them to his memory, and he leaves immediately and he goes back to the disciples to tell them what he's seen. Mm -hmm. Not what John does. Whatever John does, we, he stays there. And he ponders, this is not about a stolen body. He takes some time to believe. Takes some time to believe. Even though he does not know what has happened, what he does know is that something great 
is going on here. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Mary, carrying all this grief to the tomb, and what she finds is a blessing there. Mary is receiving a blessing that Jesus gave to her and gave to all of us on the Mount of the Beatitudes. Remember what he said on the Mount of the Beatitudes? Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Oh, how many people are mourning right now? Mm -hmm. And we must trust in our Lord to bless and comfort them. That is what the angels and the voice of Jesus do. That's what they did for Mary Magdalene. For, for her, through her tears, the blessing and the comfort. Mary is waiting at a site that millions of Christian pilgrims continue to visit. It's, called, it's the Church of the Holy Sepulchre today. And it's currently closed because of COVID-19. Jahan, do you realize it has not been closed since the 14th century when the Black Plague came oh, through the Holy wow. Land, the bubonic plague? Oh my goodness. I was there recently um, visiting Jesus' tomb. Mm -hmm. uh, I was one of only, only four of us could fit in there at once. Wow. David Wad, Patty, and Bill Murray, and me. I'll never forget it. Mm -hmm. Never, never forget it. There we waited as if and for angelic messengers to share with us some good news, some revelation, we experienced a major blessing. There is a very ancient tradition in the Mediterranean world of for aging widows to bring their handmade funeral shrouds. You, you had your fascinator on, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, John. Uh, they would have this shroud, this beautiful scarf they would, that they would wear, and they'd bring it to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, to the site of Jesus' tomb in Jerusalem. And a priest from the church would bless that funeral shroud for the widow. Who's, um, and that was part of the priest's job, was to administer this unction to these veils so that they could be brought back home by the widow, and she could await the day when that would, she would be wrapped in that for her funeral. Mm. Um, such women, a practice that still happens today, they continue Mary's devout waiting, waiting for the comfort, waiting for the blessing, waiting for the angelic message, waiting for the voice of their Lord. There is also waiting upon the angelic word of their own. They are also waiting for the um, angelic word of their own resurrection. Today you will be with me in paradise. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. Mm -hmm. But she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary, Mary. She turned and she said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni. Or is it Rabunai? Oh, Rabuni. <laughs> Rabuni. I don't know. Rabuni, Rabuni. Which means teacher. teacher. It's like her eyes were opened. Yeah, right. Yeah, her eyes were opened. Uh, but do you notice how at first her mind had told her this is the gardener? The gardener. The gardener. That's right. <laughs> um, 
It's not until she hears the voice of her Lord that that's pierced. The fog is pierced, the cloud is mm -hmm. pierced, and it goes right to her heart. And then she says, Rabuni, Rabuni. The resurrected Jesus says, Mary. She replies, Rabuni. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a true meeting, a, a moment of a full disclosure, mm -hmm. a true sharing of presence between Mary and her Lord. Oh, that tomb had to be so small, so, so small. In life and in death, spaces tend to get very, very small. Human babies spend nine months in the womb, hearing their mother's heartbeat, and hearing the sound of her voice. Mm -hmm. You know, they know their mother's voice. And when, when a baby's born, uh, if the mother's speaking on the other side of the room, that baby will turn its head and it will mm -hmm. know the voice of its mother and it will start to... Mm -hmm. It will know. The ear and the heart, they're connected. The ear and heart are connected. Long before our eyes or our brain are ever trained, or ever learn anything. For Jesus to voice Mary's name was all the encouragement that Mary needed to realize, finally, the amazing, profound reality of his resurrection. Mm -hmm. This was not a phantom vision, but in a live presence of her beloved teacher, Marabuni. This is not just his resurrection, it's her resurrection, too. Mm -hmm. um, as with those widows at the Church of the Holy Sepulchre that bring in their shrouds, bringing their funeral sh shrouds, those widows come in, they're scarred by grief. Christ's resurrection is a healing unction, a healing for not only the widows, not only for Mary, but for all of the heart-aching, heart-broken humanity. There is one resurrection. There is one baptism. There is one God and there is one Father of all. Mm -hmm. One true life. Remember, this was the person Mary knew personally. And I've taught about this before. Per, coming from the Latin through, and sona, coming from the Latin sound, this is literally the Jesus of personal experience. This is when our Lord's presence is sounded through us and our presence is pierced, is, is uh, touched by the presence of a personal God who loves us. When uh, this was the Lord in person, the Jesus that Mary Mary knew by heart. The sound of love, the sound of love, it's known from the womb to the tomb and beyond. Like a baby, our own heart has access to the aliveness of God. Access to God in a way that the mind can't quite grasp. The heart loves what the eye cannot see, nor the mind understand. Back to St. Paul. St. Paul tells us that the mind is absorbed with things that are below. The mind is absorbed with earthly things and helping us get through this earthly life, and that's good in its own way. Mm -hmm. The mind's absorbed with things it can measure, things it can reason out. The mind is insecure. Unless it knows what's going on, it's always trying to solve a problem. But the heart rejoices at the greatness of things that it doesn't quite understand and it can't explain. It rejoices at things beyond the self, beyond knowing, beyond grasping, and beyond controlling. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, 
I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The heart understands the aliveness of God in, the, in a way that the mind just can't do, just doesn't, can't articulate. The heart loves what the eye cannot see nor the ear hear. The heart rejoices with all the sights and the sounds of Easter joy, even in the strangest of contexts, like today, like that experience in England all those years ago, like Mary Magdalene at the temple, at the tomb. The resurrected body of Jesus, the story Jahan has read so beautifully, gives us a vision of a larger heavenly reality, uh, of us with risen souls, able to realize more of the beauty of God beyond what we can see with our eyes or rational mind. The beauty of God's image in our humanity, the resurrection being in us, and also a glimpse, a glimmer of God's glory in divinity. Despite persecutions, despite plagues, despite wars, despite quarantines, Easter has come. Mm -hmm. And Easter continues to come with a special blessing on those who mourn. Set your affections on things above where Christ is. There is where your heart belongs, where your treasure will grow and expand beyond anything this world can give. Amen. Amen. And Alleluia. Alleluia. And this is a good time to uh, affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. Mm -hmm. We believe, we believe in, in one, one God, God, the Father, the Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the church that its members may be united in you and led to reach out to an anxious and fearful world with faith and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our nation and our community, and we especially pray for all in authority in our government that they would make wise and responsible decisions. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for the situation we are in with the global pandemic. Forgive us when we fail to respect your image in one another and when we are reckless with your creation. In your mercy, bring healing to the earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for Chicagoland and all who are suffering from infection, for those struggling to breathe, for those who, whose livelihood is on life support, for those reaching out to supply their needs, and everyone administering your healing hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for all who have died, especially Bill Bartholomew, Audrey, Fred Buck, Betsy Norton, Rob Dupre, 
and Colin Sylvester, that they may find rest in your eternal love. We also pray for those who mourn. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those seeking your presence or a deeper knowledge of your will and purposes, and those suffering alone, that they may be found, that they may find and be found by you, O Lord. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. hear our prayer. Help us, Lord, to enter into this Easter tide, believing in the risen life of Christ at work in our hearts, homes, and all of humanity. May we, like Mary, ponder with tender joy the angelic message of heavenly healing that awaits all of your children and the entire cosmos. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls. And to you we give you glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Good morning, Lake Forest and Lake Bluff. Uh, good morning, online Holy Spirit world. Uh, there are people uh, tuning in from all over the country, yes. Jahan. And I want to thank the people who have been praying with us from Texas, mm -hmm. uh, from California, from the uh, East Coast, from all over. Thank you for joining us. We are delighted to have you with us. Um, uh, sorry we're not together in person in our uh, beautiful church. We hope that um, maybe by the end of May there'll be an opportunity for that. In the meantime, you can see all the programming and offerings and ministry that we have available at our website, www.chslf.org. Mm -hmm. I hope everyone joins us for a virtual coffee hour following this service. You can be dialing in from Florida. That's okay. We mm -hmm. want you. We want you to join. It's a lot of fun. It is. And fun. Jahan has something to tell us even more fun. Absolutely. Well, happy Easter, happy everyone. Easter. Happy Easter. <laughs> well, I know that Family Ministries has put together something super creative for our youngsters. Because it's Easter, I know it's a little different this year, but you can still have a fabulous Easter egg hunt. Mm -hmm. And so our Family Ministries team has organized a lovely plan for all of you to get in your car or go for a walk in your community to try to spot out some of those Easter eggs around the neighborhood. So please visit our website for more information about the Easter egg hunt. But I also think that Father Luke and I promised a surprise during our Thank Good you. Friday service for the children. We said we may have a little bit of a surprise for our for our young ones. So do we know anything about that, Father Luke? Well, I think we I think our, our we may have a little bit of footage. Uh, from oh. something that uh, happened a little earlier today, uh, maintaining proper, proper social distance. <laughs> uh, and you'll see how close our friend came to the Church of the Holy Spirit. Oh, wow. Take a look. So you see, if anyone had any doubt about it, Reverend Jahan and I, we have some special connections oh, we to, sure the big do. Guy, to the <laughs> That's big guy. Right. We're so grateful for to the Easter Bunny. Thank you, Easter Bunny Thank and Easter you. Bunny's helper for uh, your visit to the Church of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And um, I did also want to uh, want to point out too um, this wonderful, wonderful. Uh, you know, it's so strange worshiping online the way we are, mm -hmm. uh, but it is such a delight to be able to work with Reverend Jahan. And I'm not the only one that feels that way. Recently, in the most recent uh, edition of Forest and Bluff, look who has the, the <laughs> page, the back page, this whole beautiful article on uh, Reverend Jahan and what a gift 
uh, she is to Thank our community. You. So um, we've got the Easter Bunny gifts. We've got the gift of Jahan. We've got the gift of all of you all with us watching. I also want to tell you a little bit about some other gifts, some Easter mm -hmm. gifts that the Church of the Holy Spirit is giving, gifts that you have made possible through your generosity. Whenever you give online or you mail in your gifts, uh, you enable us to respond to the needs of the world. Mm -hmm. And I want you to know that each of the following organizations, they are... El Puente Latino Food Pantry at our sister parish, Nuestra Señora, mm -hmm. Family Services of Lake County, North Chicago Com Community Partners, and Beacon Place in Waukegan. All four of those ministry partners each will be receiving a check for $500 wow. from the Church of the Holy Spirit. That for is Easter. a blessing. Well, they need it. They need they our do. help, and they are responding to people who are hungry and in need mm -hmm. uh, right away. And uh, the last thing I want to say, just a couple of pastoral announcements. If you're on our email list, you know that this week we lost two really, really special beloved souls. Uh, Colin Sylvester uh, died at his, uh, in his home in uh, South Carolina. We will have an event here at Holy Spirit down the line when we are uh, when we can gather in person again. Colin, of course, started the Verger Ministry, and Connie, who is a faithful senior warden here, blessings to Connie. And just recently, uh, the death of Rob Dupre. Uh, Rob and Susan, longtime fixtures here in Lake Forest and at the Church of the Holy Spirit. Um, uh, Rob was the father of Lucy Bickford and George, of course, and we know Bill and um, uh, Annabelle and Eloise and Daisy, those beautiful girls in the St. Gregory's Choir and in the Cherub Choir. Mm -hmm. uh, again, as soon as we can gather together, a memorial for Rob coming our way to, at Holy Spirit. In the meantime, please keep the Sylvester's and the uh, Dupre Bickford family in your prayers. And walk in love as Christ has loved us and given himself up for us an offering and a sacrifice to God. John, we have really been blessed by the music ministry mm. at the Church of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. uh, Patrick and Andy and Linda have brought recordings, and, and the quartet has provided these 
uh, amazing technological wonders mm -hmm. so that we can enjoy uh, their gifts and talents and uh, special music. Um, and of course, I have so enjoyed singing with you mm -hmm. and uh, uh, having these uh, songs which Jahan and I select that are uh, easy to sing along. They're house church songs. Yes. I mean, they're just, and we want you to sing along with us now. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, so I invite you to sing uh, hymn 325 from the hymnal. Let us break bread together, also in your service leaflet. Mm -hmm. Let us break bread together on our knees. Let us break bread together on our knees. When I fall on my knees, with my face to the rising sun, O Lord, have mercy on me. Let us drink wine together on our knees. Let us drink wine together on our knees. When I fall on my knees, with my face to the rising sun, O Lord, have mercy on me. Let us praise God together on our knees. Let us praise God together on our knees. When I fall on my knees, with my face to the rising sun, O Lord, have mercy on me. And I also want to thank you, John, because Jahan is trying to follow in the footsteps of the altar guild at the Church of the <laughs> Holy Spirit, and I am altar guild dependent. And so grateful for the ministry of everyone at the Church of the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit, especially the altar guild yes. and the work they do behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, John, thank you for setting this table. Um, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. So we are camping out in the wilderness as we uh, celebrate this Holy Communion. Mm -hmm. And we do so joining a long, long line of our predecessors who have improvised when they needed to improvise. And I'm thinking, John, if you go all the way back to the uh, early Hebrews whose temple in Jerusalem is destroyed mm -hmm. and they are sent into the Babylonian exile. This is a long, long time ago. And uh, uh, their city is destroyed, their nation is a, uh, is a wreck, and they've got to leave, go to a foreign land. Mm -hmm. And so what do they take with them? Well, they take the bread of the presence mm -hmm. from the temple. Uh, they take their scrolls. Uh, they take their sacred writings. They take things that they can carry with them. Mm -hmm. And they take their Sabbath. Yes. The Jews took those things with them to whatever land they went to. And they were reminded of uh, the temple. And they were reminded of the presence of God with them. And they were reminded who they were. They were children of light. Mm -hmm. They were the chosen ones. And over the course of, of history, of our faith history, uh, the temple was rebuilt and destroyed, rebuilt and destroyed, and then Jesus says, this temple will be destroyed and it will be raised up in three mm -hmm. days. 
And at Easter, part of what we do, we celebrate that every Sunday is Easter. That's right. Every Sunday is Easter. Mm -hmm. um, because when Jesus is raised from the dead, uh, actually, it, we, we see the first glimpse of it on Good Friday. Uh, the temple in the the temple curtain is torn in two, mm -hmm. and through Jesus our Lord, there is no separation between us and the presence of God. We no longer have to go through lots of hoops to get to the bread of the presence of God. Uh, that's available to all of us. The Holy of Holies is not only available to you, where you are, wherever you are, the presence and the Holy of Holies is in you. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing you can do to lose it. So Jesus gathers with his disciples on the night before he dies. And he knows he's going to die. And he wants his disciples to take heart and to remember that message that the Holy of Holies is with you. God's presence is in you. And so he takes a loaf of bread and he says, uh, he takes, he breaks it, and he blesses it, and he says, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then he takes a cup of wine after dinner and he says, this is my blood of the new covenant. Uh, the Jewish people were the chosen people. They had a very special relationship with the maker and creator of heaven and earth. And they were meant to be a light to the nations. And Jesus says, there is a new covenant. The new covenant is uh, everything that the Father taught the, his chosen people. Now the Messiah teaches the whole world that you are loved and that when you take a drink of this cup, know that all your sins are forgiven. And so we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. And we celebrate that we are part of the salvation story. We are part of the great biblical story that goes all the way back to the Old Testament. It's carried through to the New Testament that wherever we are, whatever the context, God is present to us. And so this is a spiritual feeding. And uh, it is a major blessing to receive it and to receive that presence wherever you are. Know that that sacrament and the presence of Christ is with you, whether you're able to receive the bread and wine today or not. Mm -hmm. And so um, uh, we take some time to remember the prayer our Lord taught us. Our, our Father, Father, who art, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will, will be done. done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. The get the uh, <laughs> Alleluia. It's been a while. It's been I know. While. Oh, I know. <laughs> Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep, keep the, the feast. feast. Alleluia. Alleluia. The yes. gifts of God for the people of God.
Please join us in the post-communion prayer. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We have had some really special faces uh, make appearances, special visitors mm -hmm. on today's online service. There are so many people who are uh, really faithfully loving and serving the world, and we, Johan and I are deeply grateful to everyone. Um, there are a couple of faces you haven't seen in a while, yes. and uh, we're going to uh, let them close out this service. Mm -hmm. um, and John, um, why don't you send us forth with, uh, with them? Well, as Father just mentioned, there are two members of this fabulous, dynamic team <laughs> who we have not seen in a while due to our current circumstances, but we are very blessed to be able to close out this Easter Sunday with two of our favorite people. So God bless you. Happy Easter. Man. Happy Easter. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. Amen. May God, who through the water of baptism has raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. Amen. May God, who has brought us out of bondage to sin into true and everlasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to your eternal inheritance. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Our glorious, innovative Easter service and rectory is now drawing to a close. And now, as we continue to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord, let us go forth into the world in the protection of our own homes and go, go in peace to love and serve our resurrected Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks. Be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Mm -hmm.